Hey, what's going on, people? It's SGZ here from the Spartan Game Zone, and in this video, I'll be showcasing my level 72 Mitosis Modes build upgraded for you all to enjoy. Whether mobbing or especially while bossing, this build tears it up, dealing insane amounts of damage. A strong offense is the best defense, and that's what this build is, but there's plenty of survivability here too. If you enjoyed the video and this build helped you out, I'd appreciate it if you could drop a like, and if you want to make sure you're first in line for what's in store next, then feel free to hit that subscribe button, and let's crack into it. So this build focuses on turning one bullet into two bullets, doubling your damage all of the time. The key piece of gear we need for that, and therefore the number one item for this build, is the Infernal Wish. An awesome shield, particularly for Moe's, which you can find in Arms Race, with an increased chance to drop from this chest. It adds a projectile to each shot as long as it isn't depleted, which let's just say you can have a lot of fun with. We want to pair it with single shot weapons, and I'll go over some of the best guns for this build later in the video. However, the Infernal Wish is not without its downside, lighting you on fire whenever you shoot too much. That has the potential to down you, but we'll get to how to counter that with the skill trees. We'll start with the Orange Tree, and this is where we counter the Infernal Wish. To boost our gun damage, we put the full stock in Armored Infantry and Drowning in Brass. We put the max into Thin Red Line, which reserves our health at 40% while raising our shield. That gives us that much needed shield buff to counter the burn, but it also lets us utilize URAD anointments without sacrificing an item slot. We also grab 3 in Blood of Ingenuity for a bigger shield boost, and experimental munitions for the bonus fire damage each time we hit that crit spot. Desperate Measures is a no-brainer if you're running Thin Red Line, and we also put full points into Felling's Doctrine for more shield and damage buffs. Finally, we add Tenacious Defense, which provides a great fallback whenever our shield breaks, and raises our gun damage for 30 seconds whenever that happens. Moving on now to the Blue Tree, which provides the majority of our damage in the form of explosions. We put full points in both Fire in the Skag Den and Means of Destruction, giving us fire damage and ammo regen whenever we deal splash damage. The latter pairs perfectly with the grenade we'll be using, able to abuse it to avoid reloads indefinitely. Tall Cross Promotion boosts our splash damage and splash damage radius. Stainless Steel Bear buffs Iron Cub and Iron Bear, we put just a couple and pull the Holy Pin. Full Stacks and Vampire for regenerating health whenever we need it and round up the tree with To The Last and Short Fuse, which boosts our splash damage massively. Next up, the green tree, and here is where the extra 7 points have found a home. We start with Cloud of Lead for added incendiary damage and the chance to fire shots for free. Stoke the Embers gives us even more incendiary damage, and Redistribution grants us ammo and health regen for a short while whenever we hit crits. It's an important skill that lets us fire off weapons like the Backburner for way longer than normal. We also put the full 5 into Scorching RPM for bonuses to crit damage, fire rate and our action skill damage, and round off the tree with points in Scrappy, but feel free to play around with these last few skill points. For the purple tree we're not specced into this one, but we will be running Iron Cub for extra support and activating any action skill start anointments. Onto the supporting gear now, and you can find a save file of this entire build in the description. As mentioned before, we want the Infernal Wish, it'll boost our damage massively through its unique effect, and thanks to our skill tree we can make sure it's always up and active. It is slightly bugged though and won't proc its effect unless it is emptied first, but an action skill start anointment will fix that. Another shield you can use with this setup is the Revolter, which belongs to the Director's Cut and drops from Sumo around here in Eskatan Row. It provides you with a massive shock damage boost whenever it's depleted, but only for a short while, making it great for bossing, but you can mob with it too. On to class mods now, and my number one pick this time around is Minesweeper, which can be obtained from Archer Row around here in the Meridian Metroplex after completing the Dynasty Diner questline, which you can get from Lorelei. 
It grants a 25% chance for each critical hit to drop a small micro grenade which explodes, netting you even more splash damage. It's a go-to mod while bossing, allowing you to absolutely obliterate those critical spots, but can be taken to the mobbing arena to do the exact same thing. You want it with the one point in redistribution, and the rest is up to you. Other good mods include the Blastmaster, which drops from King Nasha around here in the Abomire. It's part of the quest Raiders of the Lost Rock, which you can get from Claptrap. It boosts splash damage up to 100% the longer you go without reloading. And thanks to our setup, we will hardly ever have to do so. It's another great choice mod, especially while mobbing. And again, you'll want yours with a point in redistribution. These two class mods are great for damage, but if you're looking for more survivability, you can chuck on a bloodletter. For each of these mods, the ideal passives would be splash damage, obviously, and I like to go for weapon damage and mag size as well. Onto grenades, and the one you'll definitely want is the Cloning Maddening Tracker, which will grant you all of the good stuff from the skills we're specced into, while also stacking any consecutive hits anointments. You'll generally want it at the lowest level possible so it doesn't down you, and it's best fun for inventing machines in the Spendopticon and the Handsome Jackpot DLC. Other good grenades include the Recurring Hex, dropping from the Sky Bullies in the Anvil, and the Light Speed from Anathema in the Guardian Takedown. For all grenades, you should be looking for an on grenade throw anointment. Lastly, for artifacts, we want the Pearl of Ineffable Knowledge, which is gained from Claptrap as part of the Guns, Love and Tentacles DLC. You'll want one with fire rate and mag size rolls, although fire rate is not as important. It pretty much doubles your damage whenever you're shooting or throwing grenades, which is safe to say we'll be doing a lot of. However, if you want to focus your setup a little more, then a Company Man artifact dropping most often from Hemivorous the Invincible in Dark Thirst Dominion cannot be overlooked. <music> Moving on to weapons now, where everything comes together and we can hit those extreme damage numbers. We want to be using single projectile splash damage weapons to make the most out of this build we can make use of both consecutive hits and U-Rad anointments. However, with the recent anointment buff, feel free to experiment with others. First up is the Backburner, an elemental Vladoff launcher that will drop the fastest from the Agonizer 9000 at the end of the Guts of Carnivora, but only if you're on Mayhem 6 or above. The Backburner is a boss dropper, the one they call the Heartstopper, and shines extremely bright in this build. It's a must-have weapon whenever you're up against the game's toughest challenges, making them almost easy. It fires an extremely powerful orb that causes mountains of damage on impact. Getting the 2 for 1 deal on this is a steal, making rapid boss kills even quicker and a lot of times instant. You can use it to mob too, but bossing is its home. Constantly chucking grenades will allow you to continue firing even when you should be empty ensuring there's no time when you're not blitzing that health bar. It's just a phenomenal weapon, and I cannot recommend it enough. Now for the Plasma Coil, a devastatingly powerful SMG found in arms race, with an increased chance to drop from this chest. If you thought the Plasma Coil was strong before, well it just got a whole lot stronger. Instead of firing an elemental beam of 16 projectiles, that's upscaled to 32, where it can annihilate enemies in a single charged shot. I'm not just talking mobs, I'm talking bosses too, and it's a little bit disgusting. It only comes in radiation and shock elements, with rad damage being the best overall while mobbing, and it'll cut through whatever stands in your way. Other good SMGs include the Terminal Crit, dropping from Moxie in Sanctuary, and even though this setup is focused on single palleted weapons, that doesn't mean you can't rock something like the Flipper, another powerful melee one SMG. It's found in Bounty of Blood dropping quickly from Minosaur around here in Blood Sun Canyon. It'll do mountains of damage constantly, never ever running out of ammo. You'll be the only gunner on the field, but it'll feel like there's 9 of you. Even with only a 10% boost from the Infernal Wish, it's still plenty powerful enough, and you can swap out the shield if you want to get more out of it. I also want to mention the Kalsen, another great SMG, dropping from Captain Traunt in Athenus on Mayhem 6 or above. It fits the build better than the Flipper, dealing the same heavy damage and shouldn't be overlooked. 
for pistols, the Free Radical is going to do some serious work. It's a shock only melee one blaster belonging to the director's cut, with an increased chance to drop from Beef Pliskin, who you can find around here in Caress Canyon. This gun is pretty much the plasma coil, but with even more damage listed on the card. It doesn't concentrate that into one burst, but through automatic fire, which sends out splash damage orbs that deal incredible damage. On top of that, secondary projectiles will spawn and crash into your target again, as if it wasn't good enough already. It's a fantastic pistol that you will definitely want at your side when up against a group of armoured opponents, or that boss who smells strongly of meatloaf. Another pistol I like in this setup is the Gargoyle, a Bounty of Blood exclusive that drops from Dick and Goyle around here in Blood Sun Canyon. It's a powerful corrosive weapon that'll swamp your enemies with green goo. It comes in multiple variants, but again we want the single palleted one so we can make the most out of it. Unlike other weapons, because it's made by COV, we will have to cool this one off, but that doesn't take away from all the incredible damage it can deal. Another great pistol is the Craps, which can come in any element and drops the fastest from Jackpot in the VIP tower as part of the Handsome Jackpot DLC, but there is plenty more pistols that'll do just fine in Moses' hands. For assault rifles, it's hard to stay clear of the Soul Render, a dull weapon dropping in the Guns, Love and Tentacles DLC, with an increased chance to drop from Tom and Zam, who you can find around here in Heart's Desire. Who can say no to homing purple skulls that deal insane amounts of splash damage? I know I can't, and Moe's is with me on that one. Its regular damage is great, but those flying skulls make its damage soar. It's definitely a top tier AR for this build, but others like the saw bar, boom sickle, or even OPQ system work fine too. The last weapon that works extremely well in this build is the Complex Brute, another legendary belonging to the Bounty of Blood. It drops the quickest from Lanny Dixon over here in Ashfall Peaks. Paired with the Minesweeper, the Brute deals incredible damage, however it's not just extremely deadly to your enemies, it will also magically down you. Using this to mob with is like engraving your own tombstone, but at least you can make sure you're happy with it. It's mainly a boss dropper because of its high damage ceiling, and you can take them out in no time at all. If you're looking for an alternative to the complex brute, the boogeyman is a great mobbing choice. It's not as good on the bossing front, but while mobbing it won't down you, and it will kill enemies just as fast. It can come in any element, again deals splash damage, and drops from this chest in arms race. So that's all for this video, I hope you enjoyed it and can use my mitosis most build to tear it up at level 72. If you did, consider dropping a like or subscribing. And I'll catch you in the next one.